1960s, Chevrolet wasn't in racing, but they did decide to produce a car that could race. But to be legal for SCCA competition, they needed a 5-liter engine. Chevy made the new 302 out of pieces of two other V8s and gave it the factory option code Z28. It was a code that would go public as a symbol of high performance to this day. When the Camaro was introduced in 1967, it was Chevrolet's answer to the most popular car Detroit had ever built, the Ford Mustang. But of the more than 220,000 Camaros produced that first year, about 600 came with an optional engine that was not well publicized. It was Chevrolet's effort to build a street machine to compete in the SCCA's Trans Am series. And by 1969, the little-known option code Z28 was already on its way to becoming a legend. I mean, it was definitely a racer special. Only the people who were real enthusiasts and kind of knew the inside uh, story were the ones who saw Z28 and said, ah, that's the fast one. The inside story on the Z28 was its engine. Trans Am rules limited displacement to 305 cubic inches. But Chevrolet engineers realized they already had the parts to meet the rule without starting from scratch. So Chevrolet took the 327 block and put in a 283 crank. 4-inch bore, 3-inch stroke, 302 cubic inches. Perhaps the hottest, most highly tuned V8 ever put on the market. The hot 302 was fitted with solid lifters and beefed up valve springs and would rev to over 7,500 RPM without floating the valve. Chevy rated the new engine at 290 horses, but that was for the insurance companies. The output was closer to 390 horses. Once they were put into race cars, they were practically unbeatable, mainly because they were just such free revving, uh, lightweight, uh, uh, just state-of-the-art pushrod engines. They were great, great motors. And Brock and his fellow editors of the time said so originally, writing, with the Z28, Chevy is on the way to making the gutsy stormer the Camaro should have been in the first place. And the test numbers confirmed it with 0 to 60 times of 6.7 and a quarter mile of 14.9 at 97 miles per hour. This car is basically a street racing vehicle. Even the suspension on this particular car is different than a standard Camaro. That difference was a heavy-duty front and rear suspension enhanced with power-assisted quick ratio steering and power front disc brakes. Also in the racing vein, the Z28 came with a cowl induction hood feeding cold air directly into the carb, which then exits as exhaust through what Chevrolet called deep-toned mufflers. The Camaro's interior was rather sparse with buckets in front, but the driver's amenities included a wood rim steering wheel and a full instrument package in front of the Hurst shifter that stirred the four-speed manual box. Other options to the Z28 package were disc brakes on all corners and special racing headers that were bought from the factory where they were tossed into the trunk and installed at the dealership. By 1969, a fully optioned Z28 could cost well over $4,000, though demand for the hot Camaro was high. That year, production blossomed to more than 20,000 units, and because of delays in developing an all-new Camaro, the 1969 models were continued well into 1970. But by then, the Trans Am series homologation quota had been met, and Chevrolet dropped the 302 engine, replacing it with the workhorse 350. But for a short time in the muscle car era, a little motor in a little-known option package won races and launched one of the longest-running names in Chevrolet history. And more than 30 years later, the Z28 is still in production, instantly recognized as a performance car, not just by those who know the history, but by anyone hearing the code name for speed, Z28.